At the Oxford Online Go Club last night, we had a short discussion about small groups. The door group, the J group, and the L group, which is what this video is about. I'm gonna take you through the L group and also relate it back to games. But what you should do is get your hands on a copy of James Davis' book, Life and Death, and study that, because that will help you not just with this shape, but with a whole range of other shapes. So the advice in the book is that even with black to play, this group is dead. So our standard method of solving life and death problems is, first of all, secure the boundaries. If you can secure the boundaries and make your area big enough and you've got two eyes, then that's good because you're making more territory. If that doesn't work, the next thing to consider is splitting the area into two. So can I divide it into two? It'll be a bit smaller, but at least it's going to survive. The next thing is can I capture some of my opponent's stones or can I escape? So they're the key things. If you can't live where you are, you don't, you, those are the things you've got to consider. So let's start off with forming, securing the boundaries. There are two boundaries on this group. The first one is at A4. If black plays A4, white will push at the other boundary on C1. And when black blocks, there's this beautiful nakaday shape, the play inside shape. And white very simply plays at A2 and the group is dead. There's only one eye. If we come back and black says, ha ha, I'll secure the other boundary, white will push on the left-hand side with A4. When black blocks at A3, you'll see it's a five-point Nakaday shape. It's slightly twisted from the previous one, but white is able to play in the center. And that kills the group. So securing the boundaries doesn't work. So that one disappears. Our next task is to see if we can split the area into two. So there's A2 and B2 that we can look at to split the area. So black tries to play at B2, white can simply push. The black blocks, white can play the placement at A3, threatening to connect out, or if that's blocked, to play at A2. And again, just one eye in the group. If black makes the eye by playing A3, white simply pushes and the group is dead. So splitting at B2 doesn't work. A2 is the other splitting move down the middle. And if what black plays here, he's aiming to play at B1, which is a very powerful move, will make an eye at A1 and another one in the middle. But when white takes B1, threatening to connect, white can then push on the side, on the left-hand side and play up. And again, it is one eye for black's group. So coming back at the, to the beginning, we can't secure the boundaries. We can't split the area. There are no stones to capture and there's no escape. Um, at this point, this group is dead. This shape happens in games. This is a door group, an L group. This group is dead. Fortunately, it's connected out to the middle with the stones at D4, 5 and 6 and can run. And it's black's move. But if white gets to play, say, F6, then that whole group is dead. There is nothing that can be done about it. So let's have a look at how this position came about, because this is not, oh, David Mitchell's put a position up on the board. It starts with a fairly simple, straightforward situation. Black has left these two stones in the corner and white is trying to kill them. And so white is pushing. Remember pushing at the boundaries, you make your opponent smaller. If you're trying to live, you try and push the boundaries out. So in this situation, Black is looking at this and saying, hey, I need to do something. If white, if black blocks, then white can play this way and this group has only one eye. The C4 move is not an eye. This is a false eye. So 
Black recognizes that and decides to play here. If white continues, black can capture this stone and will make two eyes on the edge. So this is gonna be okay. But black has not, white has not finished yet. Um, when black plays here, white plays up and there's a cutting point at C4. White can cut at C4 and that will cause a lot of trouble for black. So white try, black tries to do something about it. So the first point of call is, okay, we'll secure the corner and we'll protect the cutting point. White can push, threatening to cut, black connects, and then we're back to the situation. This is a standard attacking method from white. White is trying to cause black a lot of pain. So at this point, instead of connecting on the second line, black tries to play on the top. White simply pushes, doesn't jump, doesn't leap in there, it's just pushes, making the area smaller. We now have an L group in the corner and this prevents the, an eye on the outside. Black is now in a difficult situation. He has to escape or die. And dying is not a good thing to do. So the, uh, knowing about the L group when you're attacking is important, but it's also important to know about it when you're defending. So in this situation, black needs to avoid the L group. He needs to stop that position. And the way to do it is to play here. When white pushes across the top and then connects, the corner is not an L group yet. Black can play the stone here and now has two eyes. If white comes in, this is not a problem. If white tries to push, this is not a problem. White has not killed the black group. Black is safe because black has recognized the danger. But if, if you don't know the shape, you don't see the danger coming, you're dead before you know it. 